So I'm going to talk to you guys about the worst day of my life. It was around sophomore year in high school. I used to live basically in Montclair by myself for a while to finish my sophomore year. My dad would pick me up on the weekends and he'd bring me home. We were on the freeway to come back home when all of a sudden we got a call from my mom telling us we all needed to gather at my cousin's house. We didn't know why at the moment, we just decided to go. At this point, we were like 20 or 30 minutes away from her house. So by the time we got there, I mean, my whole family was there. It was nothing unusual or out of the ordinary due to everybody always gathering at her house. But this time, something felt weird. We didn't know what was happening, but you could kind of feel it in there as soon as we got out of the car. When I got out of the car, I, as soon as I got out, my cousin came, she ran and hugged me. She was crying and crying. I didn't know what was going on. She ended up telling me that they had shot her brother. At this point, I didn't know what to think. She was hugging me. I just remember pushing her away and telling her, don't play like that. That's not funny. She's like, I'm not playing. She's like, they shot him. Why do you think we're all here? She was like 10 at the time. I was like 14, 16. So I didn't know what to think. She's like, I don't know what to do. We don't know where he's at. She's like, we're waiting for my mom because she doesn't know exactly anything. As soon as she finished saying that, her mom happens to drive by. And she comes home and she was like all happy. She, I mean, she's always happy to see us all. We see her get out of the car and she's like, oh, I think something big happened in front of high school. She's like, there's a lot of cops, there's a lot of reporters, like news people, helicopters are here. She's like, it took me a while to get home. We kind of dismissed it. She asked her, my cousin who came and hugged me, she's like, where's your brother? My cousin didn't answer. She just dismissed the question. As soon as she had finished that, one of my aunts went up to her and told her, the reason the streets blocked off is because they shot your son. She didn't finish saying that sentence, but all you see is my cousin's and my aunt's suddenly body dropped to the floor. Like, that's something you kind of see in like all these news or like First 48 or stuff like that. You never think something like that's going to happen to your family. At this point, I don't remember how we ended up leaving her house. I just remember being at the hospital at that time. We were at the hospital. We didn't know what to do. Crime investigators at the time had come up to us. We was, it was weird because like, it's like we wouldn't expect that. They came up to us. Apparently, during that, that day was a really bad day. There was around seven people that got shot or stabbed. My cousin was one of them. We were worried. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to think. Nobody was telling us anything. It was scary because I had just literally talked to him like an hour and a half before school ended. So it's like he was like my brother, and not knowing what's happening to him was scary. When we got there, everybody was crying and crying, like, obviously. Like, that's something you wouldn't think of happening. We decided to go into the emergency side, and that's when they ended up telling us that we all needed to go home since it was 11 p.m., that they couldn't have a lot of people there because they didn't know what was happening and trying to investigate. We all went home, except my cousin's parents and my parents. We were there. That's when they ended up telling us that he was in critical condition and we couldn't be there. I felt that wasn't the worst part. Going home, it was had to be around 4 a.m. That's when my mom gave me a call saying that she wasn't going to be able to get home for a while, that the hospital had gone on lockdown. She told me that this is the last day I'm probably ever going to talk to my cousin to menti mentally and physically start saying goodbye to him. There's nothing we could do at that point. She told me that the bullet had done so much damage that they couldn't physically do anything else, everything medically possible have, that they could do was done, that they were basically waiting for his brain to die. We didn't know what to do. She told me that they had done everything. They ended up taking his large intestine out. They only left him with 12 inches of his small intestine because all the damage had done. And that even if he lived, he was going to have a hard time. He was only 16 at the time, and he was going to have to take at least 55 pills a day, and he would only be able to eat blended foods for the rest of his life, if he survived, which they only gave him a 5% chance. It's a little worse, like hearing that from somebody like you care about who's your brother, like you can't really think of that. Little did we know, and little did the doctors know, two and a half months later he would be walking out of the hospital. He's 20 years old, uh, 20 years old now, he doesn't take a single pill in his life, and he literally eats any and every solid food possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>